Hi guys, well today we're going to be taking a look at an X99 board from Gigabyte. This here is the X99 Ultra Gaming. Now we've already checked out the Z170 Ultra Gaming and uh, this board here is very similar, albeit just in the physical appearance. And along with the rest of the refreshed X99 boards, Ultra Gaming here comes with uh, some new technology and support there for Broadwell E. On offer is a rather distinct theme, which is certainly a lot different to other X99 boards out there. Not only does this board come with USB 3.1, but it also accommodates a variety of different storage options, including SATA, SATA Express, U.2 and M.2. Now, X99 Ultra Gaming is available for £250 in the UK, $270 in the States. So, you know, as an outright cost, that is pretty high compared to another platform like Z170, but the high-end desktop platform is an expensive thing altogether, you know, as a whole. But, uh, you know, in the X99 arena, this price here for this board isn't too bad at all. So join us as we explore this board in plenty of detail today and uh, then give a verdict at the end. Right, guys, we're going to start with the unboxing experience for our Ultra Gaming, just to give you guys a bit of a taster as to what you get inside the box. So as you can see here, very, very lively, very bright. Uh, there is big emphasis really on the RGB lighting with this board. And uh, we've got the G1 Gaming there. Of course, this board does come from that series. Now there is a flip lid on this, as you can see. Gives you a bit of a preview of the board inside. <laughs> the only thing is, we've got an anti-static bag covering that board anyway, kind of defeats the object. If we just flip this box over, we've got a big listing here of all those features. Of course, I've already mentioned the RGB lighting. That is a big deal with this board. We've got all those features listed there, um, dual gigabit LAN, we've got a killer controller and an Intel controller. We're going to go through all of these features in this video, so uh, we don't need to go through those now. And then at the bottom there, we've got the technical spec. Now inside the box, we first of all have the motherboard there in this nice padded tray, anti-static bag, so that's nice and protected. And then we've got the bundled accessories, and there are a lot of things here to talk about, so uh, we'll just get stuck in. So first of all, we've got those two fabric cable ties there. RGB LED strip cable. We have the uh, driver CD there with the utilities. Do not disturb hanger. And on the other side, we've got enter. Have the user manual. Now that will be useful if you uh, come up against any problems or if you just want uh, you know, a few uh, tips or guidance as to how to get things set up. Got the labels there for the hard drives that can come in handy. We've got these silver SATA cables, there are uh, two, four, six all together. We've got some SLI bridges here, that is a, uh, a flexible one there just for two cards, and then we've got a, uh, a fixed one there inside which is a three way. We've got the rear IO which has a nice cushion on the back there. Got the G Connect, which allows you to uh, connect up your um, your cables on the front of your case much easier, and then we've got the eight pin adapter. Oh, and of course, don't forget about the sticker. Okay, so here is X99 Ultra Gaming. So if you've seen other Gigabyte boards and especially the Z170 Ultra Gaming, you'll notice the overall theme is pretty similar. So across the board we have a combination of white, black and red being used. And we also have some LED lighting which can be customised. And this is one of the headline features with Ultra Gaming, so we'll have a look at this later on. And so if you're planning to use any of those colours that we've mentioned for a particular themed configuration, then it should coordinate very well. For example, you can see here we've got some Corsair Vengeance LPX in red, and uh, those combine very nicely with the board. And the other thing to note is that this board does conform to the ATX form factor, so it will fit inside most mid-towers. So we'll now move in for a closer look at the different areas of this board. So let's start with the CPU socket. Of course, being an X99 board, the socket here is LGA 2011 version 3. However, with this Ultra Gaming, we have the Intel Turbo Boost 3 technology added in. So as well as supporting the current lineup of Haswell eCPUs, this board also supports Broadwell E. And Gigabyte add in a gold-plated design for better contact and longevity. Now Ultra Gaming utilises an 8-phase power design which is digital. And we have long-life black caps used throughout which offer up to 10k hours. Covering the MOSFETs we have a heatsink which has that white and red livery. And which is linked with a copper heat pipe to that heatsink there which covers the X99 chip just further down the board. Behind the top heatsink we have the CPU power which is an 8-pin socket. And we also have two CPU fan headers. One of those is optimised for a pump and that's going to be handy there if you're using a closed loop. 
Moving on to the memory area, we of course have eight slots here since we are dealing with X99, and those are reinforced with steel too. So there are four on either side of the socket. So Ultra Gaming here supports quad channel DDR4 with up to 128 gig for standard and 256 gig for registered dims. Up to 3600 MHz is supported and XMP 1.3 is available too. Now as well as those typical features we also have LED strips here which sit in between those slots and which tie in there with the ambient LED system. And you can also see there we have a single USB 3 header next to the 24 pin ATX. Next up we have the storage which consists of quite a variety of different standards. First of all we've got that single U.2 port which is capable of bandwidth of up to 32 gig a second. There are only a few drives available on the market right now but this does future proof the board by having it. And then we also have a single strip of SATA Express. Not including those SATA ports on the Express we have an additional 7 SATA 3 6G. Now there are very few X99 boards with two M.2s but Ultra Gaming arrives with this combo here. Again providing us with 32 gig a second. The only pitfall is that the upper M.2 can only really accommodate something like a Wi-Fi card because of the space and since this board has no Wi-Fi support out of the box then that would really be the only benefit. Behind all of the storage we have the Intel X99 chipset which has a rather large heatsink sitting over it and you can see there that Gigabyte has blended this in to merge in with these storage ports. That heatsink there is connected to that other heatsink located at the very top of the board and it is more than up to the job of keeping that X99 chip nice and cool. Next we arrive at the PCI Express area which is populated by four PCI Express 3.0 X16s and a single PCI Express 3.0 X1 and the modes for each of those X16s are 16, 16, 8 and 8 and so yes this board will allow for two cars to run simultaneously in X16, X16 which isn't something which comes with every X99 board. Not only this, but all of those X16s are reinforced with steel. That provides you with some extra protection there for the slot, which comes in handy there if you've got a particularly large or heavy graphics card. SLI and Crossfire are also supported too. Now there are a few other things to mention with the PCI Express. Along with the different areas of the board, we also have some LED lighting here at the base of each PCI Express, which can be modified using Gigabyte software. And we'll do a demo of this lighting system at the end. And we also have a Molex connector, which can provide you with supplementary power for the PCI Express. And it's good to see that that is placed at the bottom, rather than being at the top as in the past on different boards. It means it can tuck away the cables a lot easier. Immediately next to the PCI Express we have the audio solution which is more easily viewed if we remove that plastic cover. So at the centre of the audio solution is the Realtek ALC 1150 which is well known for being a reliable codec. Along with that we also have all of the components isolated to prevent any interference and then we also have an audio amp and the Japanese audio caps. And so all of this means that we get a very capable decent quality onboard audio solution. Okay, and lastly we arrive at the rear I.O. section of Ultra Gaming, and this gives us the following connectivity. We have a PS2 keyboard mouse, two USB 3 ports, a USB 3.1 Type-C with holes there for the Wi-Fi antennas, a USB 3.1 Type-A, dual gigabit LAN, that is via the Killer E2400 and the Intel i219 a single USB 2 with another free USB 3 and then finally we have the audio ports there which are gold plated so quite a varied selection there. Now before we round things off we have the lighting configuration. At the bottom of the board there is an RGB LED strip header which allows you to install lighting into your computer case but we also have a series of built in LEDs which can be modified both in terms of the colours and the lighting effects. So here is a quick demonstration of how this looks and how it operates. Okay, so that concludes our look at X99 Ultra Gaming. So for an X99 board, you're getting plenty for your money in terms of features. Things that instantly spring to my mind uh, for this board are the multitude of different storage options that you get. Many different flavors, you know, you've got the standard SATA, uh, SATA Express, M.2, as well as U.2. And then you go to different aspects of this board, and we've of course got that uh, dual X16 modes there for the graphics cards, which as I said earlier, 
isn't as common as you'd expect. That's uh, definitely a great inclusion, along with those steel reinforced PCI Express slots. And uh, you know the other thing that uh, is really essential uh, to the general day-to-day -day usage is the back panel, which is populated by plenty of ports, including USB 3.1. Now Gigabyte place a lot of emphasis on the lighting on this board. You know, they've gone to a lot of effort in order to make sure that the different areas are kitted out, as well as uh, making sure that the lighting does work in terms of the software. And granted that this type of thing, this feature, isn't everyone's cup of tea, uh, but you know, if you are wanting to kind of liven things up, then you can do. Uh, but you know, even if it's not really your cup of tea, you can always switch those things off anyway. So guys, the full review for this board is going to be up on the screen in the description very soon. Over there we're going to have all those benchmarks and the best overclock that we could get with this board in terms of uh, the 5960X that we used. Uh, we managed to squeeze out 4.9 which is a pretty decent result altogether. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys very soon.